You might have slept on this one, but what it can do should wake you right up. Hey there, I'm John, this is Two Brothers RC, and this... <laughs> ...is the Arrows Edge 540. Ostensibly a 3D trainer, the Edge is 3D capable and it's super enjoyable to fly. I had asked the Hobby Zone people to send it for months, and they finally did. So I'm going to go ahead and put it through the 3D foam airplane review system that's designed for 900mm to 1.3m wingspans. So this is actually a pretty ideal plane for somebody who wants to learn how to do 3D because it is pretty performant and it does do nice maneuvers. It's not terribly prone to stalling, though it does get a little squirrely when you're flying in wind and at lower speeds. If you're like cranking it around like this, this is where you start running into issues. You gotta have a little bit of coordination with your rudder and your elevator to make sure that it stays level. We have a little bit of a headwind right now, so we're gonna hover it real quick, just kinda show you what that looks like. As you see, the plane just kinda floats with the wind. You could absolutely learn how to torque roll with this plane, no problem. It does do really nice knife edges, although it does seem, in my experiences, to need some back elevator pressure. So if we go in the knife edge, yeah, you gotta pull it towards you, because it's trying to pull away. But it does handle really well. I mean, that was a really sick knife edge pass. Rolling Harriers aren't bad either, although it does get affected by the wind. Even though you don't see it hitting those trees that I'm looking at, it's there, as far as the plane is concerned anyway. You don't need any special mixes to get wing rock free Harriers. It does those pretty well. It does nice waterfalls too. In fact, really well. You do have to use a little bit of rudder to get it to point where you want it to go coming out of the waterfall because it kind of just does whatever it feels like doing. Uh, consistent left rudder helps a lot doing those maneuvers in my experience with this plane and other foam planes that are 3D. So adding some left rudder and it does make it point exactly where I want it to go, which is straight down the runway corridor here. Those really nice pinwheels. Uh, kind of sort of crankshafts, not the way that you would normally enter a crankshaft, but it does them at least. It bleeds off energy very fast too. All in all, it does pretty much everything you would expect a foam 3D plane to do. Rolling Harriers are fun too. and the waterfalls are quite nice. Inverted Harrier, whoa, a little close to the ground there. Inverted Harrier is pretty nice. Got a little bit of wind picking up again, but again, it just does really well as long as you give it some nose up input. Snap rolls to hovers are pretty easy. As long as you uh, remember that it does try to pull away, I'm using full right rudder and it just will not stabilize itself. Sometimes planes are like this, they all have their own unique quirks and personalities. Walls, waterfall right above the grass. Nice forward tumbles. It does carry momentum if you do it right. Otherwise, the uh, rudder deflection just totally kills any maneuverability that it has. Knife edges do require a little bit of back pre pressure sometimes. Well, sometimes it's forward depending on what you're doing. That kind of maneuver there is where it's gonna bite you, so make sure that you pulse the throttle as you're coming out of it. Otherwise, bad stuff's gonna to happen to you, like it's gonna crash. Man, those rolling Harrier circles are so sick right above the ground like that. 
This thing does everything well enough, but it's not a master of any particular maneuver. It's just good enough. Is it perfect? No. But it's a foam plane, and it's inexpensive for what you're getting. But you can rip around no problem with it. Max out the control throws and you'll have an abundance of control authority. The Edge hits all of our review criteria. It can be flown in the runway corridor. It doesn't fight 3D inputs. It's got tons of thrust. Harriers are stable and it's XA capable, giving it a score of 5 out of 5 in the agility section. But there's more to a plane than how agile it is. How does it handle in flight time? However, when it comes to flight time, if you're doing aggressive 3D flying on a 2800 SMC high voltage pack, you can reasonably expect almost seven minutes depending on how you fly it. We are at right now, six minutes and 33 seconds of spirited 3D flying, doing a pretty good job landing just at storage voltage at 14.76 volts. We averaged six and a half minutes on SMC 2800 high voltage batteries. If you're flying a battery with bigger capacity, you should have no issues hitting 7 minutes and beyond. Or if you're less aggressive, you'll still hit 7 minutes, but that's not my flying style. Still, 6 minutes is very respectable, so the Edge gets a 4 out of 5 here. One other thing to note when you're flying on the stock ESC is that it does have a pretty aggressive low voltage cutoff and you will crash land if you're pushing the limits. Use a Spectrum AR637T linked below with a voltage wire that it comes with so that you can get callouts on your remaining battery level and be prepared to land when you start hearing 13.5 volts under load. Otherwise, this happens. Power died. Oops. The biggest issue with the Edge, and the part of this review that it loses the most points on, are the gear that it comes with. Just like the original E-Flight Extra 300, also manufactured by FMS, the gear are bendy and they can't withstand Harrier landings, or really any landing at all that isn't buttery smooth. If you have a bad landing, you are going to grab the gear and fix it because they're going to splay outward and bend over time, and then you're going to prop strike and break the prop. It's the weakest part of the whole plane. 3D airframes should have stiff suspension, and the gear shouldn't require bending back on a regular basis. Also, the plane sounds like a shopping cart full of cans when it rolls. 3 out of 5. This kind of thing really needs to be improved. Like most FMS-made airplanes, which this plane is, even if it says arrows on the box, this one has great paint, good linkages, durable foam, and plastic hinges. I had to cut a bevel into my wings where they joined so they would actually fit together in the edge itself, which is super annoying. They fit when you're putting them together outside of the plane, but not inside of it. A quick bevel with a hobby knife fixes this though. If your wings won't fit, that's why. Check the setup chapter later on, which covers receiver placement, the bevel that I did with a hobby knife to make the wings fit better, and any other mods that I felt were necessary for more info. Moving on to avionics and lighting, the Edge features great servos that are fast and precise, and they're metal too. Nothing that I did would make these servos mess up. I didn't experience any ESC overheating issues that I could see, and the motor mount didn't care about a couple of prop strikes either. The only issue that I had is that there's literally only one spot to work with for the battery, so it's not really adjustable at all. Not really a huge fan of how limited the spacing is to work with there, but it works well enough. I just wish that I could get the CG even further back. Overall, the Arrows Edge 540 scores a 20 out of 25. Is it perfect? Not at all. But it's rare that anything is perfect out of the box. Maybe consider giving it a chance, and you might find that it's huge amounts of fun. Priced at $310, it's pretty good, and honestly, overlooked. I hope this video helped you see what this plane is actually capable of. I'm sure an even more skilled pilot would fly it way better than I did here. It'll honestly do basically anything you ask it to do, and it's durable and easy to fly, too. It's hard to argue with this one. Coming up, we'll be comparing the Arrows Edge 540 against the FMS MXS and the E-Flight Extra 330 SC, placing them in a tiered ranking. But for now, let's move on to the mod section. First up on our adventure here to modifying this plane, take a sharp hobby knife and slide it at a 45 degree angle along the foam of the wing to create a beveled edge. Do this to both wings at the point where they meet up. 
otherwise they may never actually join inside the fuselage. Second, if you don't have a Two Brothers sticker yet, visit the merch shop in the description below and slap one on the plane. While it won't do anything except look cool and give us a few bucks, uh, I forgot where I was going here. Oh, right, <laughs> receiver placement. I recommend placing the receiver mounted with 3M 5 pound double sided sticky tape to the plastic wing plate. The only way this is going to come off is if you crash and you have bigger issues to worry about if that happens. I recommend using an AR637T or a Bind and Fly 637TA. The 637T comes with the voltage cable, the 637TA does not, so you'll need a spare cable which you can buy from the description below. Plug it into the vault port and use the sharp hobby knife from earlier to drill a hole into the red ESC wire with the battery unplugged. Hold the red lead of the voltage cable with a pair of small pliers and push the red lead into the hole you just drilled. Then wrap that with electrical tape. Then wrap the black lead against the tape to cut it off. Or you can physically cut the black wire off. It's unnecessary. This will give you voltage info while you're flying, which is super useful and way more accurate than any timer could possibly be. But wait, there's more! With the advent of AS3X Plus, I'm not only giving away every one of my aircraft setups as I do videos on them, I'm also giving away the gyro programming info too. All for the low, low price of free. Snag the transmitter setup file on our Discord server located in the description below and plug in these values for your gains. 1x overall gain. 25% roll gain, 45% pitch gain, 25% yaw gain. 140 priority on all axes, 60 roll lock with default pitch and yaw, and default release rate. I liked how these values felt, but you might think that they're too aggressive or maybe even too gentle. Adjust them to your own preferences. Just because I recommend something doesn't mean that it's gospel. Experiment and find out what works best for you. If you find that these guides are helpful to you, please do hit that super thanks button or pick up some merch on the Two Brothers merch store. We take donations there too if you'd like to fund the cause of making airplanes fly to their full potential. I'll leave you with some real-time thoughts on the edge before we wrap up, and I hope you'll be excited for the final Freewing F-22 90mm review video coming out next Saturday, documenting how well it can fly along with all of the setup info needed to make yours perform as well as ours does. Final thoughts on this thing, I love it. It's pretty good. It handles really well. I'm able to throw it around really well. I'm looking forward to taking it up against the E-Flight Extra 330SC. I'm actually genuinely curious which one's gonna be better. Now, I already know in terms of mod worthiness, the Extra 330 is a better choice because you can throw the battery further back. On this one, there's literally no space inside of this plane to adjust the center of gravity. This is all you have to work with. This is a bulkhead. If you go any further than this, you go into the wings. So you're pretty much stuck with this as a default battery choice. I did almost all of my flying on SMC 2800 high voltage batteries. They are great. They work really well. And as you can see, I had I, you get to a certain point with 3D flying, you don't mind doing stuff lower to the ground because all the maneuvers that you see are just basic stick inputs that you're just used to doing over and over. So the anxiety goes away and you can get really low. And it's nice to see that this plane performs and it lets me throw it around and have fun with it. And I can't wait to do the same thing with the extra 330. Since we already got the first review out of the way, we can really ring the hell out of that thing and see how it stacks up to this one in the future. But for now, if I had to give this a score of agility off the bat, obviously it's a five out of five. It does everything I tell it to do. Um, what I don't like is that when you give it uh, knife edge spin inputs, it tends to do a pinwheel. So it kind of spins around the nose like this. It does have that weird tendency. I don't know why it's like that. Probably something to do with the rudder and or maybe just the design of the wings. Or it could be the fact that it's made out of foam. Who knows? All I know is that in general, it flies really, really good. I'm glad we were able to get a chance to fly it. If you guys want to support what we do here at Two Brothers RC, you can always hit that super thanks button. We always appreciate that. Or you can just, or you can just pick up the plane from the links in the description below. Arrows was kind enough to send this to us. I'm happy that we got a chance to fly for them and really showcase what it's capable of. I know there's way better pilots out there than me. That's what I could do with it. Imagine what you can do, especially if you follow our 3D tutorials, because if I can do this, I know you guys can do it too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys again next time.